Hello, welcome to my presentation. I'm Wei Songwen from Hong Kong Polytechnic University. In this paper, you proposed a fractal graph based formulation for genes positioning and real time kinematics. Or another co author is Dr. Li Tanshi, also from Hong Kong Polytechnic University. Our session is localization for intelligent vehicles. Here is the outline of this presentation, mainly includes the background, the problem definition, overview of the proposed method, and the factor graph for genes positioning, and for genes real-time kinematic positioning, and finally is the experiment results and the conclusions. So genes is usually used for many applications, especially for the autonomous systems, including autogen vehicles and the online area vehicles. However, here is a this is an urban Kenya test in Hong Kong, typical urban Kenya of Hong Kong. You can see this is a commercial u blocks receiver. The error, 2D error can reach like 80 meters. Actually, this is not acceptable for Australian applications. And for a single point positioning based on a raw measurement, we can get an error like 50 meters. And even for RDK, we get a mean error, I mean a 2D error of like 10 meters. So the major problem is arising from the signal reflection and the blockage from the buildings, leading to the multi-pass effects. So let's look into the genes positioning problem in mathematical modeling. In here, we got the receiver. This is the genes receiver and the satellite 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We receive the signals from five satellites. And then the shoot range measurement denotes the geometry distance from the satellite to the receiver can be modeled by the expected, I mean the actual range distance between the satellite and the receiver and the noise including the atmospheric and the tropospheric consistent of the atmospheric errors. Now here is the multipass error. And then in here, we got the two additional error source, including the receiver clock files and the satellite clock files. If we get the shoot range measurement from multiple satellites, we can do a snapshot based weighted disk positioning. This is also called GSS single point positioning based on the measurements from the first satellite to the M satellite. The M represents the number of satellites received from the, from the satellite. And the G is the geometry matrix, and the W is the weighting corresponding to the uncertainty of each shoot range measurement. And the state we want to estimate is the position and the receiver clock bus. However, if we got two, I mean the red satellite, it represents the protein signal, for example, the multipass signal from the building reflection. We get additional delay, I mean additional bus to the shoot range measurement. And as a result, the state estimation is biased. In other words, the GS, the GS single point positioning can be easily misled by received GS outlines, I mean the multi-pass multi -pass signals. In other words, the single point positioning is sensitive to outline measurements because it only considers a measurement in a single epoch. So all main ideas like here is the single point positioning based on the measurement in a single epoch. And here is a typical EKF, I mean the filtering based estimator. It considers the states in two consecutive epochs due to the first order of the marker for assumption. With the velocity, we can do the EKF based estimation using a short range measurement at the previous epoch and the current epoch. In this paper, our idea is like to make use of all historical information to increase the robustness of the optimizer against the outline measurement from the first epoch to one, two, three, four, five, five epochs, maybe more epochs in the future to estimate a trajectory of the states. The first point is to make use of the all the historical measurements redundancy. The second one is to explore the time correlation between historical measurements simultaneously. I mean, all the epochs actually they are time correlated. We explore the time correlation using the fractal graph. 
The overview is like here's the sensing part. It gets the measurements from the Doppler and the shoulder range and the carrier phase. And then we can estimate the receiver velocity based on the Doppler measurements. And then we can calculate, then we can formulate the factor graph based equation based on the velocity factor and the shoulder range factor. And finally, do the optimization to get the estimate of the state. And we can do the double difference modeling and do also do the factor growth optimization for, for the real time kinematic to estimate the float solution. And finally, the integer ambiguity can be estimated using the lambda algorithm to estimate the final fixed solution. And for the measurement modeling, here we get the observation function for a shoulder range. It includes, as I mentioned in the previous slide, it includes multiple parts. And for the carrier phase, it has additional part is like the integer ambiguity. This one also needed to be estimated. And the other part is almost the same. Here is a carrier phase range measurement. And this is the position of the satellite S. And here is the position of the receiver represented by G means global frame. Okay, here is a satellite receive the shoot range, the carrier and the Doppler measurement. And in here, the Doppler model is like, here's the Doppler measurement. It can be denoted by the range rate and the receiver crop bars and the satellite crop bars. <clears throat> and this one is also the multi-part effect and the rose reception. And based on, this is the modeling. Here is the long side vector. And here is the velocity of the satellite and the re velocity of the receiver based on this modeling. We can get a Jacobian matrix based on this modeling function. And we, the Jacobian matrix, we can estimate the velocity of the receiver and the receiver crop bars based on the Jacobian here and the Doppler measurement. Therefore, we can connect to consecutive epoch based on the velocity estimated here. And some variables are defined here. And the more detailed definition can be found in our conference paper. And first, we can formulate the genus positioning using factor graph like this. Here is the state, and the node here represents the shoot range at epoch one, epoch two, and the, the con to consecutive epoch is connected by the top measurement. For the state, it includes the state set from the first epoch to epoch n, and for each single epoch, it includes the position of the receiver and the velocity and the receiver clock bars. And first, we can derive the shoot range factor like this. Here is the, here is the receive shoot range. This is the observation function of the shoot range based on the state of the receiver. And then, similarly, we can derive the velocity factor. This is the Doppler, the calculated Doppler velocity. This is the observation function of the Doppler. It means this is the expected Doppler velocity. And finally, we can integrate two parts to optimize the whole trajectory using factor optimization. In here, we're using a series solver to solve this error function. And for the FGO for real-time kinematic, it's slightly different because we need to uh, propose the processing like the double difference modeling of the measurements from the receiver that also usually, usually cause the lower and the reference station. Here is a, the W means here is a very representative model. Here is the master satellite. Here is a satellite S and the double difference measurement can be calculated by first double difference and the second double difference corresponding to this part. And then we can do the double difference for the carrier phase. And this is the first layer and by double difference, the first layer together we can get the final double dis difference carrier phase measurement. After applying double difference operation, we can easily remove the atmospheric and the clock related errors, both applicable to the double difference carrier phase measurements. And for the factor graph for real time kinematic, after we do a double difference modeling, the state is also similar like a trajectory from epoch 1 to epoch n. And then for each single epoch, 
except from besides the position velocity and uh, the receiver clock bias, we also need to estimate a double difference, double difference ambiguity. And the first part is like the derivation of the double differential range factor is very similar to our previous should range factor. The major difference is like this measurement is based on the double difference modeling. And here is the expected double difference, double difference should range fact should range measurements. And similarly, we can formulate the double difference carry phase based on the double difference carry phase measurement and the expected double difference carry phase measurement based on the state, the position of the satellite, position of the master satellite, and the position of the base station, I mean the reference station. And finally, we can formulate three kinds of factor. The first one is the Doppler factor connecting to consecutive frames. And the second one is the double difference shoot range factor. And the third one is the double difference carrier phase factor. Similarly, we solve this function using the series solver to estimate the float solution. And finally, the integer ambiguity is resolved using the lambda algorithm based on this reference. So in here, in regarding the experimental evaluation for the genes positioning, we evaluate the weighted square, EKF and FGO. And for evaluation of genes RTK positioning, we evaluate we evaluate the RTK using EKF based on the RTK lib. And this is the proposed integration. The set sensor setup is like we using the U-Box receiver. Here is the automobile level receiver, and we using the ground truth. Of using the non expensivity to provide a ground truth positioning at an accuracy of centimeter level at a frequency of one hertz. In here is an evaluation of the genes positioning in urban Kenyawa. Even if the error is like decreased from 70 meters to only to only 30 meters using EKF and 9 meters for FGO. And here is the error like the blue one is the proposed integration. You can find the error is decreased significantly in majority of the throughout the test. Here is the trajectory. The blue one is the proposed trajectory, and the black one is the uh, ground truth trajectory. You can see the proposed is pretty smooth, almost very close, the most close to the ground truth trajectory. In here, we also challenge our proposed method using very low cost data collected using a mobile phone data, the Huawei P40 Pro phone. The weighted square error is like 31 meters. This is pretty large. Is the error like deviated dramatically from the black one. The red one is from directly from the weighted square using a mobile phone, and the proposed is the blue one. The inspiring result shows the effectiveness of the proposed method. You can see here the error like the blue one is a proposed decrease from 31 to 12. We believe the improvement is very large. And here is the evaluation of the genes RTK. The error is decreased like from 2 meters to 0 0.6 in this kind of scenario. You can see it's here in uh, urban Kenya. The error is decreased like here is the ground, here is the ground truth, and here the blue one is the trajectory of the proposed method. And here is the trajectory estimated using RTK leaf. You can find the error is like decrease uh, from 2 to 0 0.6 with a fixed rate of like, actually fixed rate is almost pretty similar. Meanwhile, we also open source <coughs> our implementation in this paper, in this link. Conclusions and future work. Actually, this is an interdisciplinary work from the aerospace and robotics, especially for the satellite navigation is from aerospace discipline and the state estimation theory. I mean, the factor graph is actually uh, developed in the robotics field. The FGO-based formulation outperforms the EKF, estim EKF estimator, improves GS positioning and RTK. Also, we open source our implementation to benefit the research community. In the future, first we will apply the cycle slip detection to further improve the fixed rate of trans RTK. 
Moreover, the capture phase measurement may also be integrated into a gene's positioning, even without the collections from different stations. I mean, apply the carrier phase to the conventional gene's positioning. Also, I want to use this slide to advertise or recently published the open navy data set. It includes the data sets collected in typical urban chaos of Tokyo City and the Hong Kong City. The data can be accessed through this link. It includes the GPS receiver, different kind of receiver, including the commercial level and the genetic level. And here you got multiple lidars, MU and cameras, and we also have provided a very accurate ground truth positioning. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. The last thing is it provides the open source implementation in this paper. Thank you very much.